You know, teachers and students in our community are grappling with how to deal with hate. We have had several incidents in recent months related to hate crimes or hate speech. And you may have just heard the FBI report that hate crimes are up 27% in Washington state. And in Seattle specifically, hate crimes nearly doubled in a year's time between 2016 and 2017. That's one thing when these are crimes, but what about when this takes place at school? It's not necessarily a crime, but it's hurtful. Glacier Peak High School in Snohomish recently had a horrible incident at an assembly when Wi-Fi networks pulled up on students' devices. The networks were names using language that mocked gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, you name it. And we've seen the footage and have chosen not to show it. But the reason we want to tell you the story is because as these incidents increase, which statistically they are, schools will need to get more clear on the consequences for hateful behavior. I reached out to nearly a dozen school districts in our area to find out their policies, and most have them. The issue is because when you're dealing with kids, there are a range of punishments possible, but some families are left feeling that not enough is being done to send a clear message that hate and hateful language is not okay. And I have to say, of the districts I heard from today, I thought the most thoughtful one came from Bellingham Schools, mm -hmm. and they talked about this idea of restorative justice, which is not just about a punishment, but how do you actually help the child learn when they make a mistake? Right. And so she says, you know, things are handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So that's great for students who learn from their mistakes, but then the student who is victimized Sometimes their families feel like, okay, was enough done and is restorative justice enough to actually stop future behavior? Hmm. So that's the balance they're trying to s strike in schools. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't stop with the student. Like when you were talking about this topic, I was like, well, what happens when they go home? What about the parents? Did they yeah. learn about this from the house and yeah. brought it to the school? Because you could teach them at the school and then they can go home and it's still getting talked to them from their parents. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to go back to school with the same. Manners. Yes, and you know, one thing that came up, I, I know a woman, they recently had an incident, and I said, well, did the family call you and apologize? And she says, no, we never heard anything from the family. I'm like, right. wait a minute, that's, like, that's if you're, yep. it's like, you need to march your kid in yeah. and say, hey. Yeah, I know how I'd handle it, yeah. a, a simple apology goes a long way. And so I guess, I mean, to you, how do you think schools should address these issues? I mean, when you're dealing with kids, they're going to make mistakes, but they also need to have the message that this is not going to be tolerated. Yeah, Schools need to absolutely. be a safe place for kids. Yep. So text us, let us know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you have some perspective that might help. I love yep. that conversation. Yeah.